taking us to another level. We love you so much. Uh, particularly, we love our parents. And we've accepted to be humble. We are children here at home. Because we learn a lot from them. And what we pass through, we are strengthened by them. God bless both of us. Um, it's, it's not very easy on my side. When I'm happy, I, I cry. Even when I'm sad, I cry. But today it's not I'm sad. But it's the joy in my heart. We thank the Lord so much. On my side, I will not be alive. I can say I'm in extension days. Because in the first days, I almost died. Me personally, I know I die. I reach somewhere far. And then there is where I heard a voice that pray for your soul. Another voice says, I had given birth and I was in a coma on my second born. Another voice says, uh, Pastor has become a widow and the children have become orphans. Another one said, pray for your soul. I, I uh, made myself righteous. I repented and I, I slept. Then I refused. And they said, no, this is not the time to go. The doctor came to talk to me. That's when I raised my heart to come back. It's, it's not... It's, it's, uh, the, the doctor had to push my heart to come back. But they, they pushed my heart to come back and they came back. It, it was for me to stand here on the pulpit and say this. God has given you the power to stand here on the pulpit and say this. God has given you the power to stand here on the pulpit our God, we lift your name on high. We give you glory because there is none like you. God, we thank you for you. Let our eyes see this. We give you all the glory in all. There is nothing that can happen to man when it's not your plan. As we are surprised, but you are never surprised. I thank you for you also kept this for us. It's not for everyone, but it's another opportunity. We give you glory for your home. And we thank you that we are to our parents. We thank you for the word that we are going to listen to you with your servant. Strengthen him, anoint him. May you grace him. May our hearts be pleased with your heart. May, they, may the word fall in the fertile soil. May it become like the seed that fell in the fertile soil. So that we may, uh, we may bear many fruits. God, let it not be us. But let it be your name. We lift your name on high. We welcome the three. We give you glory for Amen. Amen. May God be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before my wife goes to sit, let me say something. I thank God for giving me a good wife. Uh, May God be praised. 
On Friday we were here together. She was here as well. I gave a testimony. But I thank God for the spouse he gave me. On Thursday I was in a fellowship in our place. At the end I was with several couples. We were fellowshipping. Just having a conversation. And I said I, nothing wrong will happen to me. Because I have a great wife. Let me tell you something important. Normally I would just be here and give a testimony. I've been in very hard place and in hard situations. If I had a, a bad household and have a bad church, I would have been dead in a miserable way. But I thank God. I'm saying that I thank God that he gave me a great household and he gave me a good church. May God be praised. There's, I'll, be, I'll be well. I am strong. My wife is a hero in many ways. When I, I was uh, coaching her, it was in a hard time. I remember when the bishop uh, spoke with us for the first time. He, he asked her a very hard question. And he said, are you ready to live with a street kid? And I didn't know what he meant. Sometime back, I was a street kid. For those that were here on Friday, you remember that I, I mentioned I was a street kid. kid. But now I'm a reverend. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. That my wife accepted me and accepted me in a hardship, loved me, accepted me and took care of me. I was not this big. Now I'm very big. <laughs> May God be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. On Friday, I mentioned it. I came with my father-in-law. I'm blessed that my father-in-law, mother-in-law are also members of our church. At the time, they called me daddy. And on the other side, I also call them daddy. <laughs> it's not an easy equation. There's a place where I was asked, but I gave them a good answer. My wife is a servant of God. May God be praised. We've been in hardship together. Once upon a time, she mentioned, if I knew, I would have let you do this by your own. That was pre, uh, being a pastor. It was hard. It was being in a fire. May God be praised. We went in a three days of prayers, the two of us, and we prayed. But now she's in joy. She's rejoicing. She's rejoicing in a very special way. God has been faithful to us. That the God that took me from the street. Now I'm a reverend. And he gave me a beautiful wife gave us a son whose name is Joshua. There's a reason I called him Joshua. My names are not good names. There's one that I do not like. <laughs> they didn't put it there. You will be surprised. 
I would never have called it my son because I don't like it either. I'm in the process of changing it. Hallelujah. I called him Joshua because of our daddy. I didn't go into too many processes. There's a reason. For those that were here on Friday, I told you, I swallow and I'll never speak. Wherever I put my foot, I'll never go back. I was born in Restoration Church. Grew up in Restoration Church. I am still in Restoration Church. My wife went to Ecodim, the, the Sunday school. My wife went to the Sunday school here at the Restoration Church. Restoration Church is my father-in-law. I don't know what to say. It's home. It's also my, my, the home of my wife. Let me stop there. I know that this is home. If we give our testimony of what we went through and our patience uh, from the time we were, we were getting married, at some point, if you allow us, we'll come and give you a testimony. And God gave us patience. God gave us patience. If we give our testimony, it will be a long process. Pastor Marcela is very aware. Our parents, daddy and mommy that follow us daily. And others also know. Let us give God a round of applause. As we are still standing here, we want to raise our hand to thank our parents. Daddy and mommy, we love you. Last time, Daddy came to visit us at our church. On Friday, I mentioned it. You, Masoro, you are very privileged. I said, Masoro, you are privileged. I'm telling you, you are very lucky. Normally, a parent is for all the children. There's no child that is superior to another. Restoration Church has many rooms. However, this is the room where he spent the night. <laughs> we, we are not happy about that. It is hard. <laughs> I thank God because he came to our place the other time. When somebody is sleeping in the room where you are and they dream, you can listen. When they are dreaming, you can listen. But if you're in a different room, it takes some special efforts to be able to know what they dream about so that you can understand what they dream But I glorify God because I follow each and every day when we are praying for our parents. And in our church, we also remember to pray for them. We feel like we receive a blessing even if we don't see them. As we are speaking about them, we feel that there is a change in what happens, even though we are not with them. Last time he, when he came, <laughs> oh, I, I had Nido. Hallelujah. I had a, I had Nido a special milk. Just because he stepped there, God did great things. <laughs> Don't take it lightly. On Friday, I was specific about it. If he can only be with us for one week. Only one week. If God can give them to us for just one week. If you, 
I'll be my sorrow for You have a very special privilege. Someday I'll come and milk little by little. Uh, I'm one of the people who really love and appreciate the vision of our parents. I have swallowed and I will never split myself and my household. I love his vision. I pray for it. And I feel like even though I don't do much more, I pray daily, praying that God make me understand what he's thinking about, what he's talking about. And God helps me. God be praised. You are very privileged, Master. Someday we'll come and squeeze you here if you don't take care. He has several churches from the east the north. He will step someplace and everything will change. You are just blessed. Even if I say just that, know that you are very blessed. You are so lucky. As they were closing churches here and there, I was among the people. I was, am among the I was among the churches that was targeted. The team going around. I came from the street. I was a street kid. Do you understand when I say street child? A street kid who lives in the street and sleeps in the street. Come from my street kid who I entered in the house of the Lord and God has been great to me. Now I'm sitting on the red carpet. Have you seen the red carpet? The dream of coming to Masoro, teaching here, has been very special. I don't know how I can verbalize it. We love you, parents. If you want to know Restoration Church, there's, there may be people who are here but don't understand. I am a sample. I've been restored fully. I've been killed. I am great in many ways. And I'm here now restoring others. May God be praised. I'm also leading pastors. That's why I'm also among the people who are going out there. I lead a forum. Where I work, I lead a forum. I lead a, a, a group of 29 pastors. Among them are pa uh, priests. I'm a Muslim. God has been faithful to me. God has been great to me. Coming from the street, now you're sitting on the red carpet and you come and stand in Masoro and teach, and God gives you a good wife and you are trusted this much. It is not a simple thing. It's only me who's saying, but I know many can say the same. God has been great to me. Let us lift our hand in praise to God. As I'm here, my parents, I'm here. And we love you. I like to tell my church, and I say, among other gifts that God gave us, these parents are included. In a gift, they are a gift. But you at Masoro, you take a lot of it. They are just a gift. They are a great gift that God gave us in this country of Rwanda. I live with so many servants of God. 
I'm among the few people who like to read. And I like to see. But I thank God that he gave us great parents. Let us give God a round of applause for our parents. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to strengthen you. That we may continue to see you. God bless you. Let us go in our scriptures. I can stand here and give praise all day long. I would like that someday I'll come and give you a testimony. So that I can truly explain myself. So that I can explain my relationship with Masoro before you moved here, before this church moved here, there is a big testimony on this hill. You are just blessed. When we come to this uh, garden of prayers, we take a bus. Every time we come, myself and my wife, it took, take us a budget. But you guys are here and it's right there next to you. <laughs> you are just blessed. You are privileged. We want to see much more. You have a very good blessing. May God bless you. On Friday when I was here, we were looking at the Pamphlets ahead. They now call me a religious person. I like to talk about what's written up there in front. Even where I am a pastor in Nyakonga. Everybody knows Masoro. They know Shekinah, they know the front row, everybody who sits on the front row. We also have a banner like that one. I like to look at it each and every day. On Friday, when we, the, those that were here, we read the, the plan for 2015 to 2022. It says, uh, consecrating to God so that we can resemble Jesus Christ. I want to give you a great news. It's been seven years very soon. We are about to get to 2022. And the question I ask myself, and you may ask yourself, if we find our parents, if we share our parents and we share the vision, and I ask myself this question, and I ask God, how far am I in my, my transformation? May God be praised. And I ask myself, what will, what will I look like in 2022? And I told you that I have a scale by which I measure myself. I stand on that word and I measure myself. And I stand on it. Because nobody can check their own scale. Somebody else has to check for them. If you look for yourself, you measure. I stand on that word. And I ask the Holy Spirit. May, may, may God be praised for giving me the Holy Spirit. And I ask Holy Spirit, where, how far am I? The years are going much more and where am I? On 2022 we'll start a new plan until 2029 and 2036 2040 something but between 2015 and 2020 how far will I go? And I ask the Holy Spirit so that he can reveal it to me. As we are here today, I want you to ask your neighbor, how far are you in resembling Christ? Ask him, your neighbor, how far are you in resembling Christ? How far are you in resembling Christ? I said it and daddy wasn't here. I said something important. Not only resembling Christ, there are so many that do not yet resemble daddy. 
Let me repeat it. Even live alone resembling Christ. There are people who don't yet resemble Christ. I resemble daddy. I like to put myself on a scale so that I can assess how far I've gone. Ask your neighbor again, how far are you? From 2015, from 20, after 2022, we'll stop with that topic and start a new one. And we'll start a new topic. On, in 2019, we have a specialty. Possessing a patient heart. A self-control and self-refrained heart. And the year is about to end. My, for myself, the year is already ending. And I'm asking myself this question. I want you to ask yourself. How far am I in terms of my self-control and patience? The year is ending. Do you know why we respect those words? When before our parents put it there, he spent time in fast and prayers. I value those things very much. He prays for it. He leaves his home. There's a reason why I like BCC. He said, said how every single one of those books before he write them, he prays and fasts. And uh, that's why I wanted to go to BCC and stay, my, stay, stay there. Because it's a sacrifice that our parents are giving so that we may receive the blessing of God. Let us give God a round of applause. My question in 2019 is, how far am I with my patience and self-control? How, how far am I with my patience? How far am I with my self-control? For those that were here on Friday, let me go back again so that we can be on the same page. I spoke about a man called Peter. Peter was called by Jesus when he was fishing. He was fishing in the waters. I'm talking only about Peter and God, Jesus called him. He was there fishing. Jesus had a plan for him to fish people. But before he could get to the place of fishing human, it took him a journey. Let us lift our hand for God. That is the word that I shared on Friday. I told you about the beds that are in Kigali. There are so many amazing beds in Kigali. There, there are beds that are uh, turning around. They even sing. They beg people to sleep. It's turning around din, 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 and singing, din, din. begging people to sleep on them. If you stay, sleep in one way, one direction, and when you fall asleep, you may fall asleep. In the, the, other other the other day, you look in the other direction. Kigali has amazing things. Those beds will be singing and turning. But this is a word that I said last time. I said, even if you stay you sleep on that bed. You cannot wake up on it looking like Christ. You cannot wake up on that bed with strength You cannot wake up from it with the power to have patience and self-control. You cannot wake up on that bed with power to have self-control and patience. What we studied on Friday, we said one thing. Very important. So that you can have the self-control. So that you can have patience. 
so that you can have self-restraint. There's a journey you must do with Jesus Christ. Let us raise our hand for Christ. Take myself as a, as a street kid who lived on the street. Tell them, telling him to be patient before they met Jesus. It is not easy. Take an example of myself, Valence, a street kid who lived on the street. Tell me to be patient. Tell them to have self-control. Tell them to have self-restraint. It requires something important to accept to pass through a manufacture. God be praised. I spoke about Peter. He did not have patience. As they went to take Jesus together with our carnal nature, he had Oh, he has a arm. He had a arm, a sword. As we continue following Christ, there are things that he asks us to leave behind. God be praised. Let us raise our hands. Forward. I kept asking myself that sword, what, what about it? You cannot resemble Christ if you still have your sword. You cannot resemble Christ if you continue to process. Resembling Christ is a process. He will make you drop one arm for to another and several other things. And he took the sword and he cut the ear. It was hard for him to have patience. Let me tell you what I finished. With. There's value in having patience. He continued to go through that manufacture. Take your neighbor and tell them he continued to go into that. He accepted to pass through that manufacture. And he walked with Jesus. He lived with Jesus. He saw how Jesus lived. He saw how Jesus is patient. Let us Jesus. He saw how Jesus was insulted, but he will, he will say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He saw the prayer that Jesus prayed and said, Let us go to him. But he also, he also saw that Jesus prayed, May it not be as in my will, but your will. And Peter was on the And he kept on going through And the street kidness was coming out of him. And the fish was coming out of him. When I talk about street kid, understand that it's my case. But understand I've never slapped my wife. I will never do it. I, but if I was still the street kid that I was, there's one time where I hurt her and I almost died my heart was in pain almost coming out I'll never ever do it again I'll never ever do that again I'm repenting when you when you when you come to the pop, he's the, the father, he's the pop. Now I'm here repenting. <laughs> I take advantage of repenting right here. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. God has been great to me. Let me tell you what happened with Peter. He came out really well done, refined. That's where I ended on Friday. As they were insulting them, they were already full with the Holy Spirit. Let us raise our hands. They insulted them and said they're drunk. If he was the old Peter, 
He would have taken some stones. He would have taken stones and throw it to them. But he had changed. I'm saying Peter had already changed. Peter had already changed. He raised his words. Where he had a sword to cut the ears. When you follow Jesus Christ properly, he trade. He trade. He took the sword, the one he held on his hand, and he gave him the sword, which is the word. Amen. And he used the word to put to in people. When they were saying they were drunk, he didn't have the canon nature. He said something important. <laughs> He was he has self he was patient. Let me say if he was the old Peter and they tell him that he was drunk and they dare tell him you're drunk. If he was the old Peter, there would have been a terrible war. But he had changed. And he raised his words. And he said words. Amen. Let me tell you what happened. We talked about it on Friday. In his patience. In his self-control. In the, the transformation. You know what happened? Ask your neighbor what happened. Ask your neighbor what happened. There were 3,000 people. Let us read. On Friday, as I was standing here on the pulpit, they were, the, the, the disciple had worked with Jesus for three years. They were changed. But he, we've been with him for over 30 years. We continue to hold our swords. We continue to give bribes. So many more things. We are continuing to steal uh, 30 years. The, the disciple only worked with Jesus for three years. They were transformed, including Peter. But that time you find someone who has spent 30 years. Restoration Church has been here for 25 years. At time you meet someone who's been here for the whole 25 years. They don't know the vision nor the mission. But I thank Peter. Let us give Peter a round of applause. He went into manufacture. He was transformed. As he was taking the word, 3,000 people were saved. Do you understand the value of patience and self control? 3,000 people were saved. And I asked myself a question. Since I've been talking, how many people have been saved? But I'm here to tell you why. And that's what I'm going to end with. May God be praised. We cannot have self-control. We cannot have patience. We cannot have self-restraint if we don't accept this sacrifice. If we don't accept this sacrifice. If we don't accept this sacrifice. So that those men can reach that level. And they accepted to, to that 12 disciples. This is the first time I'm speaking with an interpreter. May God be praised. The 12 disciples, including Peter, they 
they died the way their boss died. They accepted to have patience until death without denying him. Let me repeat what I'm saying. To you Those 12 men, including Peter, they accepted to die the same death as their boss. Today, the person who enters in a church and find a pastor preaching and he said who's the kid of God he had and he said who's the kid of God the child of God that I can take into heaven all the children all the Christians raised their hands Everybody fears something that can bust. You keep on teaching that you're the son of God, child of God. Ask him if they're standing in front. And the pastor took the microphone. And he said, <laughs> who forgets that I'm a sorrow child? Or everyone who's here, they know that I'm the child of Masor. Masonga. <laughs> Invite me one day, I'll explain what that means. Let me tell you, brethren, you cannot reach the level of patience. You cannot reach the level of self-control. If you don't understand, you don't want to walk, if you don't take the journey with this person, for you to walk with him, for you to understand his words, the hand that has used to taking a bribe, somebody came and gave me money. My, my wife knows, gave me 400,000. So that I can go and give and, and bless a couple that was present. The house that I was living in was 800,000. I had a date of 800,000. Nearly 800. She was at King Faisal. They were counting money for me. <laughs> I was praying and feeling like I'm going in a ditch. And people felt that I'm going somewhere. And I, was, I, w I just was in the elevator going up and down. I would hit the elevator down and then hit it up. And they asked me, what were you doing in the elevator? The more they're counting their money, the more I'm praying. And I couldn't find a way to wait to put it. And I prayed for people. And somebody said, Pastor is praying for, for everyone else, but no one is praying for him. If I thought, I thought that if I go pray outside, they'll see me. It will be a problem. That was the same time that Bishop Richie Bigambo was in the hospital. So I went in the elevator and I would hit up and down to pray inside. Going down. And I was praying, going up and down. Imagine somebody bringing you 400,000 when you're in so much trouble. That, if that, that hand of mine has changed. That, that, that hand of self-control and patience. There's a man who told me they no longer lift their hand to slap their wife. God has made them a, a, a dog. And anytime they might, they want to lift their hand, they, it goes back. If God can only continue holding that hand. Think about someone who would, was given 400 when they're in such trouble. But let me tell you what I said. I said, I respect my wife. I don't know who told them to come to me. They, I respect my parents. The third, I respect myself. 
I cannot do what other people cannot do. Let me ask you this question. If he was before, I would have said, just give me a bit. No, 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 no. If I was before, I was. I remember being in, in hardship another time and Pastor Marcelin gave me some money. Another, another, another time I came, Daddy gave me money. Daddy does give money. Hallelujah! <laughs> Amen. The, the, the daughter that God gave us. Now I have a grandchild. The last, man, the last contribution I received is from Masoro. It's yeah, mommy who gave it to me for the wedding of my daughter. We have parents, my brethren. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Ask them for prayers, ask them for money, they have everything. <laughs> May God bless you. I spoke about this. If it was before, I would have taken the money. Let me tell you something. Valence has been changed. Valence has been transformed. I know how to have self-control. Invite me someday, I'll explain to you how I have self-control. Paul said that I know how to live in, in circumstances. I know how to have self-control and I can preach the gospel. I thank God because I'm teaching, preaching where there are people who know each other. He was the PF of a project, project manager. <laughs> there was a pastor who was... There's a pastor who took two million. It's me who you normally sign. It's me who signs. They are the one who also give authorization for everything. When the pastor has signed everything, they, they know. When the pastor has signed, it's all accepted. Ask him. If he, he has ever heard of me taking even a coin of 50, there's someone who took two million that doesn't belong to him. He took two million. Do you know why? I have been saved. As daddy, there's never been a circumstance where he will come to for dispute of money. There are so many man, there's so much money that comes in our account for the vulnerable children. But I know how to have self-control. And I teach those that are with me that they must have self-control. Let me tell you, good father. You will never come to resolve any conflict of money. The air is good. Come feeling at home. That is because of self-control. It will never be possible in my old nature. I've been a thief. I even learned how to study. I went to study how to be a thief. I don't know about you. I was taught how someone put soap. I know how to open every kind of padlock. <laughs> but, 
don't, don't have a problem. You can leave me at your home. I, 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 I am a changed person. I am a changed man. I am a transformed man going in heaven. <laughs> I was taught how to steal property. <laughs> One of the people I was with here on Friday wanted to open a door and they couldn't open it. <laughs> so I still remember all of those. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus was very smart. What made him come was to be a fisherman. Of he started with the with the fishermen. He was not an easy person. I thank God that who brought me and has been good to me. Because I know how to open the padlocks. I know that even the things that are hard, I'll be able to open them. Coming from here, I was able to open a padlock that was... I came with a delegation of men and women, including my father-in-law, and they were trying to open a door. And I was seated in front of someone's car. I said, let it be. You know how the Christian respect the pastors. <laughs> And they said, you, you just sit, we'll get it solved. But yet I knew how to do it. It's, it's all in my head. <laughs> I just took a one look at it. They're here. I just looked at it and I opened it right away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I am a transformed man. May God be praised. If you want to teach about patience, self-control, teach what you know. I like to teach people what I'm not yet able to. But let me tell you the truth. It is not because they teach me something that I'm not able to. Daddy told us something about having been consecrated to God. And I will feel like I should tell him, please hold on. Let, let me tell you, I follow every teaching of Masoro day, day by day. I have my son. <laughs> he knows two important men, Kagame and the Apostle Even when you open YouTube, he knows how to do My son that you see in front, you gave me value, may God bless you. I will tell him about my dad, and he will say he has two daddies. And my, his, father, his grandfather and myself. And ever since daddy came to Nyachonga, and I said, this is my daddy, we got home, and, and he gave, the son gave it. I saw the daddy of daddy. I saw the daddy of my daddy. I saw the daddy of my daddy. Uh, he, he said one day that he has, she, he has no, a good no, mother. And I saw him, my mother, who's an old mother. <laughs> and he said that your mother is old. <laughs> in, a, in a bit, I'll show him my mother. <laughs> I am a transformed man. <laughs> The patience is within me. Self-control is within me. May God bless you. We cannot know how to have self-control. We cannot know how to have patience. 
if we don't accept to take the journey with Jesus so that he can put it in us, no one else can do anything else and uh, unless we accept Jesus so that he can make us pass through the manufacture and we come out as a refined product being a really good product are there no people who take uh, bribes anymore? Are they people who are speaking, quarreling? The second thing that makes us have uh, patience. is a word written in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 26 all of the words uh, the scriptures speak about what I'm discussing right now tell your neighbor that the first reason why we can keep in is being transformed into Christ and the second one the second one that's that, those are the two things I'm going to tell in my sorrow the second one is to be led by the spirit of God you could have patience a person can hold you but they will leave you one day but the person who's been held by the Holy Spirit he gives him patience and self-control brethren you cannot go to bed in the night and the next morning you already have self-control and patience Tell your neighbor that it's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, May we be led by the Holy Spirit so that our carnal nature, the, the carnal nature of the first Adam, there was no patience, there was no self control, there was no patience. But we thank the second Adam. Let us clap for Jesus Christ. Do you know how I love Jesus? God gave his only one son. He came on earth and suffered. And he raised high. When he went on high, and he said, let me give you. God gave his only son. And the son went up. And he gave down the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you. God gave his son. He came and passed through the life. Until he went on heaven. Once he got to heaven. He sent, once he got to heaven. He sent down. He sent down the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came, and he said, I'm not going to go just like that. He said, I'll give you the fruits, and I'll give you the strength. Let us say a big amen. Let me tell you this. God gave his only one son. Jesus came and passed through the life. He went on heaven and he released the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came down He said he will give us the fruits. And I'll give you the fruits of the Spirit. In the Galatians 5, the, in the fruit of the Spirit, there's patience. There's nothing you can do for yourself. Tell your neighbor there's nothing you can do for yourself. You cannot enable yourself. You cannot enable yourself. You cannot study patience in university. You don't eat it in the pills. 
If you are fighting with someone who's strong, at some point they'll get tired. But the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, He will hold you. He will squeeze you and give you a different life. Say a very good amen. We are about to pray. I said so many things. I could have said so I thought I'll come here and just give praise. In our patience, in our self-control, we, we, are, we give birth to Tell your neighbor in patience and self-control, we, we give birth to people. We give birth to people. Peter was able to have 3,000 people. Saul, a man called Saul, who was, whose name was changed to Paul. Do you know that Saul was also cutting ears? And, but one day he was insulted and they told him a very harsh word. Oh, a snake? It bit him. But they said that the devil that he served, think about a person who would kill people, but God gave him a patient heart. Let's say a big man. He did not say harsh words. He didn't say any terrible words. But if you go down, it says that everybody knew that the God of Saul, of Paul, Paul, was a great God. We are about to pray. When we accept to be patient, when we accept to be, to be I'm going to tell you one benefit. There is, we give birth to people. That we give birth to over 3,000 people. Touch your neighbor. And say we are about to bear fruit because of our patience. Because of our self control. There are people who will be burned. Let us raise ourselves. And we pray God to continue. We ask God to, to accept us to pass the, the manufacture and that the Holy Spirit we cannot have self-control unless you take it from God. You cannot have patience unless the Holy Spirit you. Let us accept to be close with this, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Let us raise our hands. I don't know your level of patience. I do not know the level of your self-control. And I'm talking to myself and I'm myself. Let us pray. I tell God that you stood up to go and you're not going back. Squeeze from us all of the other remaining Accept as Holy Spirit. Let us raise our hand. Let us pray. Father, we, glory. we raise our hand in front of you. Let everybody pray for themselves. Everybody on their own, please pray. Speak, use your own words to speak to them. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the glory. 
Dakene kukumbwa mwami, dakene kumvi mirindi yawe, dakene kufatwa nao, dakene kukomezwa nao, dakene kujirigwa neza nao, dakene kwambi kuimbaraga nao, dakene kuchigikirwa nao, dakene mwami imana kujirigwa neza ni mbabazi za ngwi numfate mwuka wera. Zamuri kiganza ubwire mwuka wera ngo mfata, mwisi na rya Yesu, mwuka wera mfata, mwuka wera ngomeza, mwuka wera ngirira neza. Mboha, nkomeza mwami, kamere yangu gendu yica, gake gake mwami. Mwisi na rya Yesu, mfata ngomeze, mfata nyice mwami kamere ya mbere ikurweho, mbone kamere ya kabiri. Mwisi na rya ikomeza kungirira neza mwami komeza kumfata komeza kungomeza nago nabivana ku nago nabikura handi mwami ahubwo nyemerere icyubairo cyawe kimanuke nyemerere ubuntu bwawe ubane nanje mwami mwuka wera w'Imana abana nanje 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 mwisi na rya Yesu reka begiranye babiri babiri bafatane biganza dusoze dufasa mamami aturambure umugisha adusengere reka dusaye mamami azamure ijwi adusengere mwuka wera w'Imana dufate kanda dukomeze dufatanye biganza anza babiri babiri atwatura umugisha w'Imana atwatura imbabazi z'Imana mu izina rya Yesu Ayaka Mokawimana tura kushimie kukonoza kolo mulimo wawe tura shima tuku kome ya masi tuizera Hallelujah kolo mulimo wawe mtu yawe suki mbala gasha suki mbala gasha pour your strength ah kome za uhimana masi continue uploading for our Jesus ayaka ya wasata kataka Continue to pour your strength. It is not by strength, nor by mind. It is by the Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet, 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 sweet. We trust you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the word we've received today. Who of you believe that is not by strength? We are going to receive children. They are a blessing. We are asking you to forgive us because of the delay. We thank the servant of God.